role and peculiar nature of, our, of work of our soldiers, policemen, and women, and uniformed officers being exposed to constant risk and danger. We are also mindful of the enormous burden of the existing pension system to the nation's coffers, especially to the taxpayers, as it is fully funded by the government. Now that we are in the 19th Congress, your Committee of National Defense intends to hear the side and sentiments both of the economic managers and MUP agencies, hopefully to find common ground and consensus and with your expertise and cooperation come up with the legislation that is fair and acceptable to all. We have in our agenda this morning two proposed measures, Senate Bill Number 284, providing for a unified system for separation, retirement, and pension of the military uniformed personnel services of the Republic of the Philippines, creating the Military Uniformed Personnel Retirement Fund Authority, providing funds therefore and for other purposes introduced by this representation. And Senate Bill Number 1421, strengthening the Military Uniformed Personnel Pension System, creating the Military Uniformed Personnel Insurance Fund, amending Sections 3 and 24 of Republic Act 8291 and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Ramon Bong Revilla, Jr. We look forward to a productive discussion of the issues at hand. And before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa. At this point, may I call on the ComSec to please acknowledge our guests and resource persons for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, in today's hearing, um, those present are from the Department of Finance, Yusek Maria Shello Magno, Yusek Maria Lualhati Dorotan Yuseko, Ms. Donna Mia Basada, and Ms. Patricia T. Hoven. From the Department of Budget and Management, physically present also are Attorney Trisha M. Baran, Attorney Ron Carlo S. Ortalesa. For the Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations, we have Attorney Michael B. Pabalinas. The Government Service Insurance Systems, we have Mr. George Onkeko Jr., Attorney Gio Giovanni Lin Quicoy Marin, and Ms. Precious Ann Taliwaga. For th the Philippine Coast Guard, we have Coast Guard Vice Admiral Robert N. Patrimonio and Coast Guard Commander Jomel Panes. For the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, virtually present is Captain Jose T. Arevalo Jr. For the Bureau of Fire Protection, we have um, Chief Superintendent Jesus Fernandez and Senior Superintendent Bernalita Silagan. For the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Ross Alvarado, Police Major General Corp Gerald Corpus. We also have Police uh, Major General Robert T. Rodriguez, Police Major General Jonel Estomo. We have Police Brigadier General Nino David L. Rabaya, Police Brigadier General Bowen Joey Masaudin, Police Major General Ronaldo Olay, Police Major General Jonel Estomo, and Colonel Maria Noel Tolentino. For the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Brigadier General Romel P. Roldan Paf. From the Department of National Defense, we have uh, Secretary Carlito G. Galvez Jr. Together with him is Yusek Ignacio P. Madriaga and ASIC, ASEC Eric Lawrence D. Virtually present also is Lieutenant Colonel Juan Chorigor. For the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, we have Jail Chief Superintendent Ruel Rivera. Jail Senior Superintendent Filipinas Fulgencio, Jail Senior Superintendent John D. Montero. We also have Jail Chief Inspector Gerald Francis Orias, Jail Superintendent Michael Angelo M. Caceres, Jail Senior Inspector Melka Quispe. For the Bureau of Correction, we have Yusek Gregorio 
Pio Katapang Jr., Director General. Uh, also present is General Alperas, Alpereras. For the Department of Transportation, we have Attorney Cherry M. Pal May Paliquit. For the Department of Justice, we have Senior State Counsel Ms. Uh, Bernadette Ongoko. For the Bureau of Treasury, we have Treasurer Rosalia V. De Leon. For the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Mr. Scranton Orculio, virtually present. For the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Yusek Cristaline Tan Uy, Assistant Secretary Sarah Lynn S. Dawai Dukanes, and Attorney Rayan Reposar. For the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have uh, virtually present is Attorney Gina Wenceslao, physically present are Yusek Juan Victor Llamas, and Yusek Oscar Valenzuela. We also have as virtually present is ASEC Esther Aldana. For the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, we have Attorney Lester Joseph Kaliwara virtually present. We also have uh, for the for the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, virtually present is Yusek Reynaldo B. Mapagu, as well as Attorney Rolando D. Villaflor. That would be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Kopsak. For the record, your committee is in receipt of the position papers from the following agencies. Philippine Coast Guard, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, Bureau of Corrections, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, Bureau of Internal Revenue, Bureau of Fire Protection, and the Government Governance Commission for GOCCs. And I enjoin other agencies to submit their respective position papers. In the interest of time, you need not read the entire text your position papers, but simply highlight the main points for the committee's consideration. All right, the order of presentation will be first, the economic managers, uh, represented by the Department of Finance, Department of Budget and Management, National Economic and Development Authority. Number two, Department of National Defense or the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Number three, Philippine National Police or the DILG. Number four, other MUP agencies like the Philippine Coast Guard, Department of Justice, Bureau, uh, Bureau of Corrections, BJMP, and B BFB, uh, Bureau of Fire Protection, National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, or the, or the NAMRIA, and Philippine Veterans Affairs Office. Number five, the government, GSIS. Number six, the uh, Governance Commission for Government-Owned and Controlled Corporation, BIR. Okay, let's start first with the... Uh, Economic managers from Department of Finance. I understand you have a short uh, presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, magandang umaga po sa uh, inyong lahat. Uh, Opening statement, we <laughs> All right. Salamat, Mr. Chair. So, again, uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Chairperson Estrada, uh, Senator Bato, the honorable members of the uh, members joining us virtually, and colleagues in government. Thank you for the opportunity to present the real state of the military and uniform personnel pension system. And uh, for this, we earnestly seek your support to move this reform agenda forward. Before we present our four-point reform, we will provide an overview of the current MUP pension system and the structural issues that contribute to its unsustainability. The current MUP pension system covers the pension from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, the Bureau of Fire Protection, the Philippine Coast Guard, the Bureau of Corrections, the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and the Philippine Public Safety College. There are four relatively unique features of the MUP pension system. First, the MUP pension system is fully funded by the national government through annual appropriations with no contributions from the personnel. Second, under the current system, the amount of pension is automatically pegged to the current salary of the personnel of similar rank in active service. Third, military and uniform personnel are automatically granted one rank higher upon retirement. 
Lastly, for our MUPs to be eligible to receive pension, they must render at least 20 years in active service. For instance, suppose one starts, he serves at 20 years old, Master Sergeant One can already receive monthly pension at 40 years old if he avails of an optional retirement. These structural variables, which have been going on for years, make the whole pension system highly susceptible to shocks and is fiscally unsustainable. In the current system, MUPs have no vested rights to their pension prior to actual retirement. Pension benefits and adjustments are granted as gift under full discretion of national government without vested ownership of military and uniformed personnel. Pension benefits and increases are unpredictable. Dependence to full government funding makes pension system susceptible to economic and fiscal downturns, which creates an unstable and unreliable benefit system for MUP and their dependents. The pension system is unsecured. The current design features pose serious threat to sustainability of the system, placing future generations of MUP and their families at risk. Because of this system, the funding requirement of the MUP pension has been growing at a fiscally unsustainable rate. According to an actuarial study that the GSIS conducted in 2019, the MUP pension system's unfunded liabilities is estimated at 9.6 trillion pesos if the current structure prevails. This represents around 53.4% of the country's GDP in 2020 and does not yet include funding requirements for those who enlisted after the study was conducted. The threat that the government will be unable to meet its pension commitments or improve the country's defense posture is real. We are already spending significantly more on pension liabilities than on keeping our military and uniformed services safe, competent, and in fighting shape. The chart shows the total spending for maintenance and other operating expenses, as well as capital outlays in dark blue bar and spending for the MUP pension in red bar. As you can see in 2022, the government spent more for pension than on MOE and capital outlays. Without a reform based on the initial simulation conducted by the ad hoc committee on the MUP pension system in 2021, the pension spending is projected to increase tremendously in the succeeding years. 214 billion pesos in 2023, 537 billion pesos in 2030, and 1.5 trillion pesos in 2040. Likewise, the effects of borrowing for pension liabilities cascade to succeeding years and are sensitive to higher interest rates. This figure shows the interest expense, the green bar, and unfunded liabilities, the orange bar. As seen in the figure, we are paying approximately 11.5 billion pesos in 2023 just for interest expense. This interest expense will further balloon to 40 billion pesos in 2030 and 171 billion pesos in 2040. Our four-point MUP pension reform is anchored on two key principles. First, the pension security and predictability. And second, our investment in peace and national security. First, we must establish a strong, sustainable, and robust social protection system that all MUP can rely on in old age. The proposed MUP pension reform aims to establish a strong protection system that can provide a dignified post-retirement income that MUP retirees can rely on in their old age. Enhancing the fiscal, the financial sustainability of the MUP pension system is key to ensuring that the state is able to honor its future promises to retirees and their dependents. This is only possible if we have a robust, well-functioning, adequately funded, and resilient pension system that can withstand emerging risks and financial vulnerabilities. In this way, we can secure the pension not only of current retirees, but also of new entrants and active MUPs. Second, the pension reform is an investment in peace and national security. We understand that peace, order, and security are preconditions for the country's development. 
Hence, the state is committed to investing in the welfare of our nation's primary defenders from the moment of entry into the service until their old age. This requires a balance between investments in a modern defense system for our active defenders and a reliable, dignified, and stable social safety net for MUPs in their old age. For the coverage, we propose that the proposed MUP pension reform shall apply to all active personnel and new entrants. Second, we propose to shift how the pension of retirees are adjusted to ensure that the pension benefits adequately covers the needs of the MUPs. Under our proposal, the pension of MUPs are now subject to periodic review. This instills predictability in how pension benefits are adjusted. Third, we propose to institute a minimum pensionable age of 57 years old. Fourth, we also propose that those in active service and new entrants be required to contribute a portion of their monthly compensation to the MUP Trust Fund to finance their pension and additional benefits such as the increased disability pension and life insurance. In developing these reforms, our primary consideration is that the new pension system is first adequate to provide for a reliable source of post-retirement income and social safety net that can address the needs of MUP retirees in their old age. Fair, dignified, and reliable, considering the extraordinary risks borne by MUP over their course, the course of their career and the sacrifices they make for the Filipino people. And third, financially sound, robust and sustainable over time, allowing the state to secure pensions for current and future retirees and their dependents without crowding out financial resources for a modern defense system the country's development needs. In the spirit of cooperation, the economic team has and will continue to engage our military and uniformed personnel and stakeholders in shaping this reform. As a grid during the May 8 small group meeting, the economic team will also convene the technical working group composed of the concerned sectors, including the military and uniform services, to formulate a fiscally sound and acceptable version of the MUP pension reform. The, legis the legislature and the military and uniform services are our crucial partners in transforming the pension system. We ask that you work together to reform the current MUP pension system to guarantee the rapid modernization and timely strengthening of our civil and national defense, the continuous and reliable provision of fair retirement benefits for the nation's primary defenders while ensuring the government's fiscal stability. Together, we can build on this four-point reform to arrive at a reasonable, fiscally sustainable, and robust solution. This is an opportunity for us to leave behind a better system that will redound to the economic security of generations of Filipinos and of the valiant men and women in the service. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, that is for our presentation. Thank you, uh, uh, our National Treasurer. Proceed now with the uh, presentation of the Department of National Defense, if you have any. you have uh, any statement? All right. Good Honorable Chairperson of this committee, Sen Senator Jingoy Estrada, to our Honorable uh, Senators in attendance, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, to fellow government officials, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. The Department of National Defense recognizes the financial implications of the government pensions on our military and uniform personnel. While we fully support the enactment of legislative measures to address the current issues hounding the pension system, the DND and the AP respectfully appeals that the, the morale and welfare of our soldiers be given due, due weight in this uh, deliberation, considering that uh, the mere uh, notion of uh, of uh, modernizing our um, uh, our our pension system, it created already some sort of apprehension. At present, mere discussions of proposals relating to retirement benefits, most especially the imposition of the pensionable age, has already affected the morale and caused uh, uneasiness not only.
from within the active ranks of the armed forces, but even from our veterans and retirees. As I pointed out by J1, the General Romel Roldan, during our previous meetings and also uh, your honors, uh, we have uh, went to Fifth ID and uh, we have uh, some sort of uh, discussions uh, with the personnel and the commanders, the Commander Norcom, and also the Commander of Fifth ID and all the personnel uh, in face to face and BTC. Uh, we we are no, we anticipated that around 70 to 80 percent of our enlisted personnel eligible for optional retirement will gonna retire because ang uh, gusto nila sir yabel na po nila yung ano yung yung pension system ng current system kasi yung apprehension po ng uh, uh, new uh, possible new MUT law uh, magkakaroon po ng implications sa kanilang tinatawag na yung uh, retirement nila sa optional retirement ito po yung mga naka 20 years na po sa serbisyo to avail the same given the uncertainty of them immediately receiving pensions upon retirement should the system be overhauled so if it is possible, we would not want to to uh, to to, uh, to um, appeal to our honourable senators that uh, we should uh, we should really look uh, on the possible uh, middle ground that we can really see uh, the, that uh, the moral uh, welfare of our people will be uh, will be taken care of uh, during our discussion. Uh, there is no problem if uh, the, you know, the system will be given to the new entrants. They all you uh, know unanimously agree. But in the four uh, uh, presentation and even the seven areas, including uh, uh, the uh, lump sum that will be given, will be reduced from 36 uh, months to 18 months. There are some, you know, some adverse uh, adverse reaction. If this is still uh, financially impossible, we are very amenable and open to modifications in the system, so long as these are these are fair and equitable to the military and the MUP, and also it is based on the financial soundness or scientific actuarial science. The men and women of the armed forces are fully committed uh, to their oath. Our soldiers, airmen, sailors, and marines are always willing and ready to defend our country and protect our people from all threats. The AP continues to obtain the highest approval, satisfaction, and trust rating from the Philippine populace. As the officer in charge of the DND, it is my sacred duty to constantly look uh, out for the troops' welfare, and one of them is the assurance of its modest life upon retirement. In fact, the president also uh, gave my gave a instruction that uh, he is very much a uh, very much concerned on the impact of this MUP on uh, the moral and welfare of our, our personnel and policemen. And uh, he wanted that uh, there should be a continuous discussion to, to have the common ground. At the end of the day, ensuring a fair, equitable retirement and pension is the least we can, we can do for the brave men and women of the armed forces of the Philippines who continue to lay their lives on the line protecting the Filipino people and defending the Philippines. Uh, for the information of everybody, also uh, the, you know, the increase of the, the, you know, the pay and allowances of uh, the soldiers only come uh, and fully fully realized in 2019, uh, your, your honors. Actually, we are very thankful for the previous administration for giving us this opportunity that our uh, pay and allowance had been doubled. Uh, with that, uh, marami salamat po. Thank you, uh, Secretary Galvez, for your opening statement. We proceed now with the Philippine National Police. Do you have any opening statement? Honorable Central Jingoy Erste Estrada, Chairperson, Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace Unification and Conservation. Central Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sir. Central Bongo. To the distinguished members of the Senate, fellow public servants, a pleasant morning to all. I'm Police General, Brigadier General Ross Alvarado, the Acting Deputy Director for Controllership. At the outset, and in behalf of the men, women, and officers of the PNP, I would like to extend my utmost gratitude for inviting us to this hybrid joint public hearing on the proposed military and human personnel pension reforms law. Such invitation manifests we value the recognition and having all the stakeholders participate in the discussion of this contentious matter. Relative thereto, the PNP expresses its support for the immediate passage 
of this legislative measure, as this would ensure the fiscal viability of government pension funds. The DILG has also directed all the bureaus in each attached agencies to submit their respective positions on the four features of the proposed MUP reform law. Hence, the PNP submitted a letter, a letter dated May 3, 2023, addressed to the Secretary of the DILG, the Honorable Attorney Benjamin D. Abelos Jr., stipulating the PNP's position on the following four important issues to it. A. Applicability of the law, whether or not the proposed bill should apply to both new entrants and active personnel. B. On the proposed pensionable age, whether or not MUPs should receive their pension at 56 years old, regardless of the number of years in the service. C. On the mandatory contributions for active personnel and new entrants, similar to the GSIS pensioners and D, automatic indexation as to whether there will be no automatic indexation of pension to the salary of active personnel of similar rank. Thus, upon careful perusal of the, of the applicable laws and taking in, into consideration the importance of the retirement and pension reform system, the PNP has propounded, propounded that on, on all the four issues, our, our position is that the proposed bill should apply to new entrants only, in line with the principle of prospectivity of statutes and non-diminution of benefits. This is further so considering that MUPs are not like any other government employees whose services are required or are on call 24 hours a day. Lately, on May 8, 2023, a small group meeting was held at the Ligaspi Ballroom Makati Diamond Residences being organized by the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office to discuss the proposed bill on the MUP retirement and pension reform system. During the meeting, the following seven key reform proposals of the MUP bill were then presented by Ms. Rosalia Vidillon, the National Teacher. A. The reform to apply to all active personnel and new entrants. B. Adjustment of pension benefits by up to 1.5% within a given year, subject to evaluation of economic conditions and actuarial life of pension fund. C. MUPs start receiving their monthly pension at 57 years old. D. Mandatory contribution for active personnel and new entrants that will ultimately inure for their benefits. E. MUPs to receive immediately upon retirement a lump sum equal to 18 months of the monthly retirement pay, regardless of age at retirement. F, all contributions and proceeds from assets shall accrue exclusively to each MUP agency's own trust fund, and G, separate trust fund committees shall be established to govern the funds. The National Teacher also recommended during the meeting for a revival of the technical working group for the MUP retirement and pension reform system under the PLLO. In view of this development, it is then imperative that the PNP will also undertake a supplemental review and re revisiting of its position on the proposed MEP reform bill. The PNP Technical Working Group has been reactivated and tasked to conduct an in-depth review focusing on the seven key features of the proposal and for the subsequent issuance of resolution stipulating the PNP's official stand on the matter. Rest assured, sir, that the PNP will immediately submit a supplemental position on this significant place, this of legislation. Thank you, sir, and maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, General Alvarado, sir. Alvarado, sir. Alvarado. Opo. Okay. Proceed now with the uh, Philippine Coast Guard. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator uh, Jingo Ejercito Estrada, sir. And uh, Honorable uh, Senator Ronaldo Ronald uh, Bato de la Raja, sir. The Philippine Coast Guard understands a need for a more collaborative retirement system for all military and uniform personnel, which seeks to ease the burden of the annual national appropriation and rationalization that, that the, the, and rationalize the existing retirement and pension scheme. With this, the Philippine Coast Guard is amenable to propose changes in the pension system 
And after a careful review of the measures being presented while taking into consideration the sentiments of our personnel, the Philippine Coast Guard wishes to convey our position on each reform proposal. On mandatory contribution rates, the Philippine Coast Guard would like to express that we are amenable to a mandatory contribution rate of 5% base on base pay only and not on the gross monthly compensation as proposed. This is in consideration that MUPs have other equally important expenses, particularly providing family support and not to discount their daily personal needs when they retire. On retirement and pension age, the compulsory age of retirement should still be at 56 years old or 36 years in the service, whichever comes later, and maintain the existing optional retirement of 20 years of satisfactory active service with outright pension upon retirement. Undeniably, military and uniform service is intensely physical and stressful that observes a 24 hours and seven days work period away from their families and loved ones most of the time while they are in active service. Retirement at age 56 means that they are given some time to enjoy their family, to recompense for their absence while serving our country. On the coverage and applicability of the unified system, Minor revisions on the existing pension scheme shall be implemented on active members. Drastic changes on measures should be avoided so as not to violate the principle of non-diminution of benefits as guaranteed under the Constitution and at the same time maintaining the morale of our Philippine Coast Guard uniformed personnel. Newly enacted laws should be prospective in nature, hence complete overhaul of the pension system shall be applicable only to new entrants. On automatic indexation, the, the Philippine Coast Guard agrees to the removal of automatic indexation provided that there shall be regular pension review and adjustments based on, in, on inflation or at 5%. On monthly pension computation, the monthly pension computation shall still be based on the, on the base pay and long give it the pay of the grade next higher than the permanent grade last held upon retirement. This will compensate the no automatic indexation scheme and at least give premium to the loyalty and on staying on to serve until retirement in order to attain the full economical utilization of services of well-experienced, highly trained, and mature officers. On the MUP AJ's own trust fund, creation of one MUP fund authority for all MUPs, which is composed of all line agencies with concerned uniform personnel, such as the Department of National Defense, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Department of Justice, and the DOTR. This is to ensure uniformity and cost efficiency. In closing, the men and women of your Philippine Coast Guard understands the change in the retirement system is inevitable. Nevertheless, the Philippine Coast Guard hopes that, abo that the above mentioned position be considered for the benefit of the government at the same time maintaining the morale and welfare of its personnel after retirement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Vice Admiral uh, Patrimonio. Are you related to the basketball player? Uh, this is under 30 degrees, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay, proceed now with the BJMP. Uh, <clears throat> to the Honorable Chairman of this uh, committee, Honorable Gingo Estrada, sir, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, and other present this uh, morning, the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology fully support the proposed bills of the Military Uniform Personal Reform Pension Bill and seek of its immediate passage with the following recommendation. First, that this bill would be applicable only to new entrants. That the compulsory retirement age of military uniform personnel remains to 56. Then the mandatory contribution be applicable only to new entrants, MUPs only, with this year, where the personnel share of 5% and government share of 16% on the first year 
On the second year, 7% and 14% consecutively of 9 and 12 or from the monthly compensation. On the fifth, that the previous rule on the payment of retirement pay for voluntary retirement be retained, that the BGMP be given due representation through its chief in the proposed military and uniform personnel fund authority board of directors that the, that the retirement for the next higher pay grade for the purposes of retirement pay and benefits be retained for the active military personnel only. With this, we're hoping for your consideration of our recommendation on the Senate bills seeking to provide a unified system for the separation, retirement, and pension of military and uniform personnel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and other centers present. This uh, public hearing for giving us opportunity to present the BGMP's position and comments. Good day, Paul, and maraming salamat. Thank you, Superintendent. What's your name again? Naka, naka... Ruel Rivera, sir. Ruel Rivera. Yes, sir. Ano yung JC? J ano? Jail Chief Superintendent. Ah, uh, jail. Allergic kasi ako si jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bureau of Fire. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the Honorable Committee on National Defense, headed by the good Senator Jingoy Estrada, sir, to Senator Bato de la Rosa, to Senator Bongo, and other members of these legislators present, good morning. I'm Chief Superintendent Jesus Fernandez, and I'm tasked to speak today on the legislative proposals on behalf of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Reforms on the retirement system of the MUP had long been endeavored by several past Congresses. However, due to the intricacy of the issues, the vastness and depth of its impact, and the sensitivities on the retirement particulars of the system, resolutions has never been achieved. The result of the persisting ballooning pension cost up to this date as a former Senator Franklin Drillon said during one of the committee hearings in the 18th Congress, the Congress must propose reforms that will produce the least sensitivities to the retirement benefits of the MUP. The Bureau of Fire Protection fully understands the urgency of the reforms, emphasizes on the imminent ballooning of the pension funding requirements. While we subscribe to the noble intents of the proposals, we seek to buttress a balanced contemplation between two government interests in issue. One, an adequate remuneration for our military and uniform personnel for their services. And two, the adjustment of such benefit to ensure sustainability of government funds. We submit that it is the general position of the BFP that the reform should only be applied to new entrants. First, the benefits bestowed to MUP personnel under Republic Act No. 6975, 9263, and 8551, and other relevant, relevant laws, decrees, and issuances should apply to those who enter the service during the effectiveness of these laws. One of the major considerations why active MUP personnel enter the service is the retirement package of the MUP person, for MUP personnel. Second, Retirement laws are social legislations. The objective of the retirement laws is primarily to provide for the retiree's sustenance and hopefully even comfort when he no longer has the capacity, capability to earn a living. Third, to amend the existing retirement benefits being enjoyed by active MUP personnel is to violate the principle of diminution of benefits. To emphasize the existing retirement benefits were unitarily given by the government to active personnel when they entered the service by virtue of the aforementioned laws and were not consistently applied since the effectivity of these laws. For the existing retirement laws of the MUP were enacted into law in recognition of the peculiar mandates of military and uniform personnel which differs from civilian services. They are constantly exposed to environmental, psychological, economic, and political risks 
and hazards on significant levels. Thus, the retirement benefits are regarded as gratuity for the personal services for the government. As for comment on the specific changes on the retirement particulars being proposed by subject Senate bills, we already submitted our position paper containing the provisions. We were, am we were amenable and not amenable, Mr. Chair. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, uh, Chief Superintendent Fernandez. Right. Proceed now with the representative of uh, the BUCOR. Greetings to our honorable senators, uh, Senator Jingo Estrada, Senator Pato de la Rosa, Senator Bongo, and to other government officials present. The Bureau of Corrections is a new member of the Uniform Service. By virtue of Republic Act RA 10575, Bureau of Corrections Act of 2013, which was approved last 24 May 2013 and took effect on the same year after its publication as required under the law. To date, the Bureau, the Bureau for Uniform Personnel have no approved separation retirement and pension plan. Its retirement and separation benefit system for uniform personnel was duly reviewed by the DOJ and endorsed to the B, uh, DBM or budget of Department of Budget and Management, but was withdrawn in anticipation of the passage of a new law, which is uh, we are now taking up. The Bucor fully subscribed subscribes to the intent and spirit of the proposed bills as it gears toward sound fiscal management and sustainability of NUP separation, retirement, and pension system. However, there are provisions in the proposed law which Bucor, Bucor have, have some preservations. Number one, as regards the age requirement of 65 years old and the 30 years of satisfactory active service requirement, Attainment of uh, 65 years old or the accumulation of 30 years of satisfactory active service, uh, which ever comes later, should constitute the compulsory retirement of the NUP. So the proposed establishment of the NUP fund authority that will handle the government or govern the funds, a separate trust fund for each agency must be established to govern these funds. It is rec recommended, recommended that all contributions and proceeds from the assets shall accrue exclusively to its NUP agency, agency's own trust fund. The BUCOR's position is for the creation of a non-appropriated fund for BUCOR Uniform pers Personnel Retirement Plan patterned after the United States Army non-appropriated fund employee retirement plan. Under this NAF retirement plan, Bucor personnel would contribute certain percentage of their salary to fund the retirement. The contributions of Bucor personnel and the Bureau's contribution will be deposited in a Bucor's NAF retirement trust fund, and those funds will be invested by the trust and used to pay the retirement benefits of Bucor personnel when they retire. Likewise, there are several land assets of Bucor which are under the exclusive control of the Bucor in accordance with Republic Act 10575 and, in, and its implementing rules and regulations. Under the law, Bucor has absolute authority to design, develop, formulate, and implement land use development plans and policies, and these real properties of Bucor shall be used as means to promote sustainability both income and non-income generating programs. Portions of the proceeds thereof may be used to finance the livelihood program that will be beneficial for Bucor's personnel in sustaining its retirement plan, which is established in accordance with the proposed Senate bill. As regards to other provisions of these proposed bills, Bucor leave it to the sound judgment of this honorable committee. Respectfully submitted 
for honorable com committee's consideration. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. General Katapang. Okay. Yes, Proceed now with the Namriya. Representative from Namriya. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Sure. I'm Captain Arevalo from Sun. Namriya. And, and to all the guests. Um, we have some comments on bill that provide a unified system for separation, retirement, and pension of the military and uniform personnel. Amria supports the, per the proposed measures with our comments summarized as follows. For its applicability, the uniform Can you please turn on your video, uh, Mr. Revalo? It's okay. okay no, 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 Retired and active personnel continue to be governed by the existing laws prior to the enactment of the new law. On its retirement age, Tamriya does not object to the adjustment of compulsory retirement to 65. Since the nature of work for hydrographers has changed over time, first, wisdoms come with experience. Currently, some officers were sent to attend training, academic courses in government or foreign institution in their senior years. This gives them only a few years to apply what they have learned if they are to retire at 56. Second, the physical requirements of the job have changed. In the past, hydrographer had to carry enormous and heavy equipment Currently, the equipment has been compact and lighter. The current retirement age for commission officers and non-commissioned officers in Namriya are 56 for the commission officers and 65 for our non-commissioned officers. Voluntary for, number, for our comments for voluntary retirement, Namriya supports the proposal to make the, the, the retirements to be 60 to the pensionable age. Furthermore, uh, sir, we have the following comments on Senate Bill Number 284. In relation to Section 3.A, uh, we recommend that uh, uh, it, we can replace it the, in the part of the NAMRIA to the Commission and non commissioned Officers of the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority which assumed the functions of the defunct Bureau of Coast and Geodetic Survey, then under the Department of the National Defense. Uh, this is our position, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Revolo. Proceed now with the PIVAO, Veterans Affairs Office. Any representative from the veterans? Online. Online, all right. We all okay. use that, uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Yes, please proceed. Uh, uh, to uh, the chairperson, uh, the Honorable Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, the Honorable Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, <coughs> Honorable Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo, uh, to all the attendees present in this joint public hearing, a pleasant morning to all of you. May I manifest our position on uh, Senate Bill number 248 as well as Senate Bill number 1421. My first, I state that the Constitution mandates the state to provide funds for the immediate and adequate care, benefits, and other forms of assistance to war veterans and veterans of military campaign, their surviving spouses and orphans, as uh, uh, mentioned in Article 16, Section 7 of the Constitution. This constitutional provision not only ensures sufficient and adequate pension benefits to our veterans, 
their surviving spouses and orphans, but also its sustainability and continuity. The Philippine Veterans Affairs Office understands that the forms on the MUT pension system should be further studied and evaluated to achieve a sound, fair, and effective retirement pension system for the welfare and well-being of the men and women in uniform. And PIVAO supports a new pension scheme that covers the new entrants. And we recognize that the government is continuously pursuing initiatives in the economic recovery brought about by the pandemic. Hence, a viable and optimal financial solution and strategic measures to support the MUP pension system must be taken into consideration. And with that, uh, we support the position of the Secretary of National Defense as regards the M MUP pension system. Once again, good morning and God bless us all. Thank you, Yusek uh, Mapago. Before we proceed with the other uh, agencies, I think uh, Senator Bongo wants to say something. Senator Go. Yes, sir. Uh, sal salamat po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, dear colleagues uh, and all the resource persons in attendance, <clears throat> good day to all of you. May I just uh, share a few thoughts on the bills included in the agenda today. Mr. Chair, I would like to put into record that I have been always uh, been supportive of our uniform personnel, even before I became a senator. Uh, their unparalleled uh, service, bravery, and heroism should be truly commended and reciprocal reciprocated. Buhay po ang isinasakripisyo nila para mapanatili ang seguridad ng bansa. Iba po ang sakripisyo nila dahil buhay po ang uh, nakataya dito. It is for this reason that I assure every uniform personnel that I will only push for or support any measure that will be for the betterment of our uniform personnel. Kahit isang boto lang po ako dito, uh, Palagi kong ipaglalaban kung ano po makakabuti sa mga nagsiservisyo sa bayan. Nabanggit po kanina ni uh, Secretary uh, Galvez what is uh, fair and equitable lang po sana. Let me be clear. Naintindihan ko po ang concerns ng ating mga finance managers. Ang galing rin po sa executive noon. Uh, talaga nababahala yung uh, DOF, uh, budget. Nababahala sila pag kulang yung pondo. Pag nagkakaroon po ng uh, problema na po sa pondo, sila po ang parating inaatasan ng presidente, maghanap ng pondo, saan kukunin nito. Naintindihan po po ang trabaho ng ating uh, finance managers. We all want to address the ballooning pension requirement and prevent a looming budget disaster. Pero para sa akin, Mr. Chair, wag sana itong gawin at the expense of the military and all uniform personnel na nagbubuwis ng buhay at uh, nagsasakripisyo. Ibahin po natin ang pagkonsidera sa kanila. May exemption naman po. Dahil sa totoo lang po, iba po ang trabaho nila. Buhay po ang tinataya nila para mapanatili ang seguridad ng ating bansa. Konsuelo na po sana sa ating military at uniform personnel. With all due respect, maghanap na lang po tayo ng pondo. Na, na ibang pagkukunan ng pondo. Kaysa galawin natin ang natatanggap ng active service at obligahin sila na magbayad ng mandatory contributions o ibahin ang pension na matatanggap nila. Huwag naman po sana. Ayusin natin ang, pwede naman po sana, ayusin natin yung pagkukulekta ng buwis. Maaring may pagkukunan pa at siguraduhin natin na walang mapunta sa korupsyon. Tanggalin natin ang korupsyon sa gobyerno. Siguraduhin natin na walang mga under the table at paghusayan po ang pagkukulekta ng mga buwis. I urge the BIR, the Bureau of Customs, to collect taxes and customs duties properly and more efficiently, eliminating corruption in government should be enough to cover for the pension requirement. We can also impose higher taxes on luxury goods, dahil mayayama naman po ang buhay bili dyan, pwede pong increase natin yung syntax. With this, we can also protect the health of our people. Mr. Chair, pinaasan natin ang sahod ng uniform personnel nung panahon ni Pangulong Duterte, Dinoble po ang sahod ng entry-level positions. Pinaghirapan natin ito ng 2017. Na-implement po ito ng 2018 sa tulong po ng mga kasamahan natin sa Kongreso. Ako mismo po ay uh, kasama doon na pinaghirapan natin to at makumbinsi ang mga kasama natin sa Kongreso. At ako po mismo inatasan na makipag-usap sa mga mababatas noon. Dahil yan po ay pinangako ni uh, dating uh, uh, President uh, Duterte. 
at uh, nakis- na, natupad po yung kanyang pinangako. Kaya uh, hindi po ako susuporta kung masasayang ang pinaghirapang dagdag sahod na yon. Huwag naman po natin sanang itratong bigay bawi. Uh, pinasarapan natin sila ngayon, pabawiin natin. Karamihan sa kanila ay may pinaglaanan na po ng pera. Yung iba dyan, uh, expecting na po sa matatanggap nila once they retire, uh, binigay na natin sa kanila, nakaplano na yan, utang na, nakapag-loan na, nakapag-installment na po para sa future ng kanilang mga anak, lalong-lalo na po yung mga ordinaryong mga sandalo. Nakaplano na lahat yan. Tapos ngayon, obligahin natin mag-contribute. Huwag naman po sana. Huwag nating baguhin ang sistema sa kalagitnaan. Sa ibang bansa, tulad ng United Kingdom, hindi po nila inobliga na magbigay ng mandatory contribution ng kanilang military. Sa totoo lang po, Mr. Chair, yung iba, uh, pinipili na lang nilang mag-early retirement dahil natatakot sila na baka tamaan sila sa isinusulong na bagong batas. Yun po ang narinig ko. Naapektuhan ang kanilang moral, naapektuhan po ang kanilang peace of mind at maaaring hindi sila makapag-focus uh, dahil sa mga usapin na ito. Kung sakali man pong may gagawing reforma sa pension ng military para maiwasan ang pagkakaroon ng financial disaster in the long run, dapat po ay applicable lang po ito sa new entrants o mga bagong papasok sa military. Dahil ang mga new entrants, alam na nila ang kondisyones, alam na nila ang pinasok nila at alam nila kung anong rules na kanilang susundin, let us spare the retired and active personnel bilang pagkilala sa sakripisyo na ginawa at ginagawa nila para sa bayan. Konsuelo na po nga para sa kanila yon. Ako po ang unang tututol kung mababawasan o maapektuhan ang mga beneficyo ng uniform personnel at retirees. Ibigay po natin parati kung ano po ang dapat para sa kanila. Lalo na po sa mga uh, uniform personnel natin na bubuis ng buhay para tayo ay mabuhay ng ligtas at matiwasay. Yun po ang aking parating stand at palagi kong ay paglalaban ang karapatan ng ating mga military at uniform personnel. Katulad po ng mga healthcare workers uh, benefits noon, uh, nagsalita po ako sa Senado dahil delayed po ang kanilang natatanggap na COVID-19 death and sickness benefits. Matagal po nila natanggap, nga dapat po ihatid nga sa mga bahay nila yung mga benefits nila dahil nagluluksa yung mga namamatayan. So ibigay natin what is due to them. Rest assured that I will only push and support measures that will be for the betterment of the military and uniform personnel at lahat po ng kawani ng gobyerno na nagsiservisyo po uh, sa bayan. Tulad noon, sa panahon ni Pangulong Duterte, full support po ako sa military. And until now po, hindi dito lang po kami. I appeal to our executive agencies and to this committee to study and evaluate the proposals carefully. I believe our very able chairman, Senator Jingo Estrada, and of course, kay Senator uh, uh, Bato de la Rosa, naintindihan po niya ang sitwasyon ng ating mga uniform personnel. We'll do, uh, kay Senator uh, Jingoy, our chairman, will do his uh, best to find balance in this and will consider the welfare and livelihood of our men and women in uniform. Maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Maraming maraming salamat, Senator Bongo. Uh, saan po ninyo? Gagawin, na, gagawin po natin lahat ng ating magagawa and we will have to strike a balance between the MUPs. Uh, may bigay natin lahat and... Uh, but we have we also have to avoid the uh, fiscal collapse ito sa ating uh, gobyerno okay proceed now with the gsis any rep representative from gsis wala G gcg Gover governor governance commission for government Owned and control corporation huh? okay okay all right do you have any opening statement Sir Onkeko. Sir, may we call on our um, legal counsel? For Who? Legal counsel. All right. Any opening statement? Do you have any opening statement? Good morning, uh, Honorable Chairman of the Committee and uh, Honorable Senator De La Rosa. On behalf of our PGM uh, week will also, I'll be presenting our position briefly regarding the MUP bill and we, we thank this committee on inviting the GSIS to shed light on uh, on this MUP bill. Uh, the GSIS has been working with uh, the good treasurer, Lea De Leon, for almost 10 years now to to come up with a sustainable pension system for the military and uniform personnel. Uh, for the two bills, 
uh, we note that uh, the bill of the good Senator uh, Estrada advocates for a independent entity to manage the MUP fund. Um, we prefer this mode of uh, management of MUP fund since uh, the MUP retirement system is very much different from the GSIS. Although uh, the bill of uh, Senator, uh, the Honorable Senator Ibilia calls for the GSIS to manage the MUP system but with a separate insurance fund, we also support uh, such bill, but uh, it would be better if a separate entity will manage this uh, fund uh, to, to make it more... Uh, but hindi nyo kaya, GSIS? Why not a separate entity? Uh, well, we, we, we can manage uh, the system, uh, for example, for the we have been managing uh, the, the retirement fund of ordinary regular uh, government employees, but uh, the, the, the MUP bill the, for the military, actually before the military used to be handled by the GSIs also, mm -hmm. but uh, the retirement scheme is such a uh, different uh, retirement age, for example, uh, they are not non-contributory. And, uh, of course, uh, benefits are more liberal than the ordinary government workers. But uh, we, we can manage, and uh, if there will be a separate entity, for example, of the on good, uh, uh, the bill that will create a separate entity, we can support the, the MUP by, by being the trust fund manager in investing these funds, since we have been investing uh, our pension fund also. So... Uh, these are just our comments uh, on the <coughs> MUP bill, and uh, we also support the that uh, the MUP bill should be contributory, and uh, hopefully it should not be commingled with the GSIS fund also. So th these are just some of the basic comments, and we will submit the, the detailed comments of the GSIS to this committee. Yon. Thank you, Attorney Lucio. Go on. Go on. We'll proceed now with the uh, Is it oh. Yes. Just to clarify uh, uh, what we're hearing now from GSIS, I think in our discussions also uh, with um, the um, president and general manager, GSIS will be the one administering the, the fund for uh, the military. So it will be separate from the fund, the pension fund that they are now also managing for the civil servants. So I think uh, they are amenable to uh, administer the fund. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh... Okay, Senator Bato, you have the floor to ask questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to, Ms., uh, to the Bureau of Treasury, Ma'am uh, Rosalia De Leon, Ma'am. Yung <clears throat> present mo kanina na yung uh, where are we now? P pwede bang pakiplas ulit yun? Yung presentation ng Treasury? presentation ng uh, kanina ng economic managers so where are we now because of the current system yun yun pakibalik yung pie chart yan yan yung pie chart yan yan hindi pala pie chart yan parang ano yan siya parang ma'am yung uh, Sinabi mo dito, 53% uh, of the 2020 GDP ay ito yung mga unfunded uh, unfunded na uh, liabilities of the MUP pension system. Uh, anong coverage dito? Uh, lahat, ito po kasi sir, di ba hindi nga po nagko-contribute ngayon. In terms of, in terms of uh, period, period. Ah, po yung database na ginamit lang po noong 2019. So ngayon po, uh, kaya po uh, we're updating the study kasi mas marami na po tayong mga pumasok sa military. Of course, meron din po lumabas, pero we're studying to update how much na po yung unfunded liabilities na nga po uh, as of um, 2022. So we're now asking for the data from our MUP on mga personnel po niya so we can again recompute in terms of the unfunded liabilities. Unfunded. When you say unfunded, Hindi pa napunduhan. Oh, kasi, sir, wala naman talagang pondo dahil wala nga contribution, di ba? So, lahat po yan, pag, 
lahat lahat po ng that's based on yung sinasabi na close group so lahat po ng mga nandito po ngayon po members po ng military pag nag-retire po sila so present value po yon how much po uh, in 2019 yung value ng pension liabilities ng national government kasi lahat po yon po pontuhan dapat ng national government kasi y- y- yung yung tingnan mo yung yung comparison mo dito 2020 it is understandable na mababa yung GDP natin 2020 because of the pandemic why not compare it with the 2021 or 2022 Tama. mas malaki ang GDP para hindi lumalabas na ganito ka laki yung kinakain ng ating uh, unfunded Opo, kaya nga sir ang ginagawa po ngayon ina-update po yung study kasi nga po in 2019 mas baka mas konti pa po yung population ng ating mga MUP syempre so, mas marami na po nadagdag but at the same time ng, uh, I, I don't see the 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 relationship between the two Kung yung uh, anong year ang coverage nito, period of year, ay yung, pe- yung period na unfunded, anong year unfunded ito. Ito si kumpara mo sa 2020 GDP. Para po ah. uh, we, are, we are trying to paint a very grim scenario here na talagang kasalanan na ng uh, MUP na ganito kalaki yung uh, para bang, uh, para bang uh, please uh, I'm not accusing you of uh, propaganda against the MUP ha? kasi para nakikita ko sobrang naman ito uh, GDP 50% of the GDP uh, goes to the parang kinakain lang ng mga MUP uh, I, 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 I cannot uh, please uh, enlighten us para magkakaroon tayo ng yung makuha natin yung true picture kasi We want to, it's very difficult to compare apples and the uh, tomatoes. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> bali po, sir, yung 9.3 yeah. trillion po is the estimate. Bali po kung magre-retire po lahat ng naka-enroll natin sa military. Nung 2019, ito po yung budget na kakailanganin ng gobyerno para bayaran yung retirement nila. Yun pong slide na to is just for the purpose of showing kung gaano kalaki yung 9.3 trillion. Sa so next slide po, In terms 9.6, of the total budget. 9.6 mil, uh, trillion. 9. Uh, 9.6 trillion po. Sa so next slide po, dito po makikita natin naman yung proportion. Ito po yung estimated na na kung magre-retire yung mga tao every year, pinroject po natin, ito po yung magiging total share nila sa budget with respect to um, PS uh, versus MOOE and capital outlay. May isa pong study ang CPBRD ng House. Inestimate din po nila yung total uh, impact po ng annual budget uh, para sa pension. De, de, do, do muna tayo, do muna tayo. Huwag muna tayo magpunta sa ibang kuwan. Yan, uh-huh. yan lang. Paki-explain yes, yan. Yeah. Ang, ang, ang purpose po ng slide na to ay ipakita kung gaano kalaki yung 9.6 trillion sa total budget. Kasi yung yun po ay... In, you mean to say in one year? 9.7 uh, 9.7 trillion ang uh, uh, no sir allocated no sir that's uh, not, unfunded no sir no ano? sir that's not the annual allocation po for pension that's the kaya nga dadalo ko yung coverage sige nga okay. bigyan ko kasi yun mahirap yung i-compare mo tong isang year lang na GDP tapos i-compare mo doon sa <clears throat> unfunded na since time immemorial yes. So, there's no point of comparison. Actually, so, if we compare po sa annual budget, based sa study po ng CPBRD, they looked at the budget from 2012 to 2015. On average, for example, for the DND, the budget for the pension is about 62% of their total budget. For the PNP, it, that's 36.8% of the DILG's budget. This is for an average po from 2012 to 2015. That's before the pandemic. Uh, uh, may sinasabi ka dyan, ha? pero ito, ito nga. I, 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 don't want, I, I want to reconcile the fact that uh, itong MUP, the current MUP pension system will result to fiscal collapse kapag hindi ito naayos. Kasi Take for example, the 2023 national budget. Nakalagay dito, the, ang nakalaan for MUP is only, sa pension gratuity, ha? pension gratuity fund, ha? vis-a-vis the national budget, only 3% of the 
of the national budget goes to the MUP. So, ibig sabihin, this 3% can bring the whole, madama yung 97% ng na budget ng uh, Pilipinas because of this 3%, it will cause fiscal collapse. Yung 3% na ito, madadama yung buong na uh, 100% of the national budget. Parang ga, oh. gano'n ba? Gano'n nga pagka, gano'n na analogy. Forgive me ha, forgive me. I am not an economic manager. I don't know how to do economics. I don't know how to do finance. All I do is to fight the enemies of the state. Yun lang po ang alam ko. Lumaban at magpakamatay para sa bansang ito. Kaya pinaubaya namin sa inyo yung paghanap ng pundo para naman Forget, uh, forget, forget uh, me. It's not all about me. Senador na ako. Kayang-kaya ko buhay yung sarili ko. Pero yung makasamahan ko ngayon na hirap na hirap bumili ng pagmintinas ng kanilang diabetes. Hirap-hirap bumili ng uh, panggamot sa kanilang uh, daily, daily existence. Ay yun ang dapat tingnan natin, bigyan natin ng pansin. Uh, mahirap kasi pag uh, gano'n, eh, parang bang... Uh, pinapalabas natin dito na yung MUP ang dahilan bakit magkakaroon tayo ng fiscal collapse. Uh, please, uh, itularoy natin ito. Let's not do misrepresentation, sir. Let's not uh, uh, paint a very grim picture para mapapasama yung ating mga military and uniform personnel. For all we know, we cannot be here talking about all these things if not because of these people who o put their lives on the line. Baka mamaya, nagtatago tayo ngayon sa bunker o saan tayo nagtatago para mag-meeting kung hindi itong mga tao na ito ang nagbigay sa atin ng peace and order. Y yun lang po. Ang, uh, klaruin natin yan kung tama ba yan na comparison or... Uh, Sir, uh, may I attempt? Yes po. Di ba po, kamukha rin po sa utang, yung usapin utang, sinasabi po natin, magkano ho ba outstanding debt natin ngayon? Sinasabi po namin, it's about uh, 61% of GDP. So, parang sinasabi lang po natin na kung kukumpara nyo po, ganito kalaki po ang ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, gano po yung uh, ang um, share ng unfunded liabilities na po yun sa uh, ekonomiya ng Pilipinas. So, sinasabi nga po natin, 9.63 doon po, pag present value po natin ngayon, lahat po ng mga babayaran natin in the future na pension liabilities. So, yan lang po ang ginagawa namin analogy. Ngayon po, sir, yung sinasabi naman po na nasabi na about na fiscal collapse, ang sinasabi lang po natin, kung hindi po tayo a-action ngayon, palaki po ng palaki yung pong pensyon na kinakain ng budget. Hindi lang po kami na-alarma na dumalaki ang binabayad sa pensyon, mas na-alarma po kami na yung pong pensyon mas malaki pa po sa ginagasos natin para sa MOE ng at capital outlay ng ating for defense. So, dapat po, tugunan po natin yun yun para mas malaki rin po, maibigay na nating share para sa mga military uh, Uh, modernization, para, para sa capital outlays. And at the same time po, alam po natin na sinishring po natin yung ating fiscal deficit. Kasi nga po, uh, otherwise, mas lalaki po yung inuutang natin to be able to finance. Dahil nga po, again, we go back to the issue na wala pong contribution, wala pong pondong nakalaan dyan. So, national government, lagi po ang taya para bayaran po yung uh, pension. Yes po, ma'am. Naintindihan po namin yan. In fact, we were talking with the chairman, Senator Jingo Estrada, na sabi nga namin, nag-usap kami, sabi niya, ayusin natin ito. Dahil, uh, dam if you do, dam if you don't tayo dito. Isang pagkakamali ng committee na ito, para dito sa proposed measure na ito, uh, kapag nagkakaroon ng fiscal collapse, dahil nga pinapaburan natin itong MUP, tayo sisisihin ng taong bayan. In the same manner, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng weak uh, military and uh, uniform uh, component or weak uh, national defense because of a very demoralized uh, soldiers and policemen, coast guard and all uh, uniform personnel, dahil pinaburan natin ang economic managers, nag-give in tayo sa kanilang proposal, Mademoralize ng mga kasundalho at kapulisan natin at lahat ng uniform personnel, tayo rin ang sisihin. Kaya nga, we are, uh, nag-iingat kami dito ngayon, yung committee nito, pag-tackle nitong measures na ito. Because kung pakinggan mo, pakinggan mo lahat ng mga 
nagsasalita ng military and uniform personnel, lahat ng ahensya, ahensya ay talagang ang kanilang pakiusap na sana naman pwede yung uh, new entrants lang. Huwag na pakialaman yung retired at saka yung mga active uh, na nasa active service ngayon. Yun ang pakiusap nila para uh, hindi ba demoralize yung nasa servisyo ngayon. Pero kung sabi nyo, wala ibang paraan talaga, you cannot avert fiscal collapse. Kung hindi natin pa-contributing itong mga nasa active ngayon, then uh, lahat tayo magsasama-sama nito. Basta importante lang, maintindihan nila kung ano talaga ang uh, sitwasyon uh, para pag bumagsak ang Pilipinas, tayo rin naman masisisi. Tayong citizens ng Pilipinas, masisisi, di ba? So, magtutulungan tayo dito. Yun nga lang, ma'am. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator Bato. Uh, yung sa retired, hindi naman natin gagalawin. Yan, safe ka doon. Yan, ang <laughs> <laughs> okay, yung bill ko, yung uh, SB 284, totally is applicable to the new entrants, no? Uh, but if you think uh, furthermore, uh, you cannot stop the bleeding. Am I correct? So we have to, kailan pa tayo mag-isip ng paraan to stop the bleeding. Anyway, we talked earlier at uh, sabi ang uh, ang uh, isa sa mga uh, proposals is to let the active uh, personnel contribute no pwede pwede can you explain to this committee kung paano sila magko-contribute kung ilan ilan yung makakaltas sa kanila and if it is acceptable to all uh, uh, MUPs ah uh... Sir, um, yun na pong, uh, unang una sir, I think uh, napag-usapan, sa meron nung nagkaroon ng small group dahil nga rin po um, napag-utos na ni Presidente na uh, with Secretary Galve, saka po dun sa kay Secretary uh, uh, Balos noon na magkonsulta po with the MUP, which we did. Kaya nga po uh, under the auspices po ng PLLO, nagkaroon po kami ng small group meeting. So dun po, pininisenta na naman po namin na aming proposed uh, reforms and at the same time, dinin ni Green po namin yung mga counter proposals ng mga different services. At, uh, for the record, pwede niyo sigurong explain ngayon? Uh, yung, lahat yung mga pinag-usapan? Uh, sir, yung pong unang-una, uh, well, sir, basically, wala naman pong napag-agrihan. Then, ang napag-agrihan po, we will reconvene yung pong technical working group para uh, mas masabi po nila mga concrete, mga detalye ng mga proposal nila. Doon po, based on the four uh, areas that we also already are looking into. So, Una-una po sa contribution, ang proposal na po nga namin, ma, yung pong staggered, dahan-dahan, based dun po sa capacity to pay ng ating mga MUP. So ang starting line po, naging 579. Yung pong 9, para na rin po sa ating kamukha po nating lahat, tayo pong lahat, yung sa civil servants po, we are contributing 9%. No, of our uh, salary po dun sa pension. And then, si government po, meron rin po siyang um, counterpart na 12%. Parang total po na napupunta dun sa pondo is about 21%. So, we're starting with 5% uh, for the military. So, hindi po isang baksakan. So, after 3 years, we now increase to 7% and then another 3 years... 1% of the base pay. Oo uh, uh, po. So, pwede po... Dun sa new entrance, so, 5%. Ganun po, ganun din po mangyayari pare-pareho. Eh, bakit... Pwede na siguro 9% kagad sa new entrance. Ah, uh, sir, yun po kasi yun ng... <laughs> Depende po kung papayag po sila. O, pwede daw, sir, sa AFP, so... Eh, sa police? Payag kayo sa new entrance? <laughs> new entrance. <laughs> ha? New entrance. New entrance. 9% kagad? Uh, uh, yeah, sir, sir Galvez. Uh, Your Honor, sa angan po namang yun talaga, even yung mga sundalo, basta kung yung nakikita ng, ano, ng um, financial uh, uh, economic team na pwedeng i-apply, sir, ang ano nga isa to, sa new entrance. So kung uh, just in case na talagang ang main intention natin is to accumulate uh, some funds para at least uh, ma-offset yung, ano, yung exponential growth ng, ano, ng ating, ano, ng ating uh, pension fund, Mas maganda siya kasi yung, ano, yung new entrance, yun ang ano na po natin na yun. So that we can correct it immediately. Baka wala na magsundalo at saka wala na magpulis. Ma marami pa rin siya. Ha? Huh? May pa rin siya. For as long as yun, ano, may, may meron tayo tinatawag siya na uh, 
your owners, yung social contract nila na handun na yun. Na when you, ano, when you enter the service, ito na yung uh, agreement natin in terms of your pension. Mm. What about the, ano, sa Coast Guard, walang, ano, sa new entrants? Uh, we are aiming to serve for the new entrants only sa the 5% yes. sir. And, uh, 5% even, lang? Yes, I know. And the 9%? Uh, only five fixed five percent sir. Because, so new entrants. Uh, yes, sir. Because uh, we are uh, we are also paying our taxes, sir, and uh, automatically, sir, kinakaltas yung tax namin, sir. Plus the additional five percent. So we are only talking about the new entrants here. Yes, sir. For the new entrants. Kung yung FP at yung PNP. Yes, sir. Uh, we concur for new entrants only, sir. Five percent, sir. Five percent only. Yes, sir. Mm. Maximum, sir. View call. Thank you, sir. Uh, Senator, first time lang po namin magiging member talaga eh. So, okay po sa amin. Wala pa po kaming retirement uh, pla, uh, and uh, BJP. Ah, B jail, jail. For the BJP, uh, Mr. Senator, sir, 5% on the first year, 7% on the next three New years. Then, five, seven, nine, New entrants? New entrants. Ayon yung straight 9%? Uh, 579 na. Uh. Pag gawin uniform to. Mm. Uh, so, so, sir, uh, pangalawa po yung sa yung pong uh, indexation. So, meron din pong uh, proposal dito po ang AFP. So, may, mas mabuti po siguro, sir, marinig na lang natin kay Secretary Galvez para mas ano po, yung, ano po yung pinopropose nila. Regarding indexation? Po. Yan ang pinaka... Sir, sir uh, the indexation is a very sensitive issue. Sensitive, yes. Uh, uh, bali, talaga lalo na po sa ating mga, mga uh, retirees at saka mga pensioners. Sa ngayon po, we have uh, more or less uh, 134,735 pensioners. And, uh, uh, and we are so happy na yung, ano, yung nagkaroon ng indexation. If you, if you look at you know, the history of the, you know, the, the salary of the, the, you know, the soldiers, napakababa po talaga. Uh, it's only during the 2019 at saka ngayon na talagang nadoble po yung uh, sweldo natin. Pero uh, for your information, sir, when I was still a soldier, nung, 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 nung si Sir Lieutenant, 735 lang po ang sweldo ko po nun. Uh, and then also 120... Noong 2019, dumoble sweldo? Y yes, sir. At saka kung tutusin, sir, para malaman din ng publiko na, na yung, ano, yung, yung benefit na nakukuha ng sundalo ngayon, gumanda lang po 2019. Actually, yung uh, previous, ano, previous years, Uh, yung mga uh, uh, veterans po natin at saka po yung mga pensioners po natin, napakaliit po talaga ng best pay po nila. So kung hindi po nag-index na sa ngayon, hindi po talaga makakaabot sa, ano, sa, sa, sa inflation yung kanilang mga sweldo. Kung kututusin natin yung mga 2015 or 2010 na best pay, napakababa po, especially po kahit na yung officer. Hindi so if we remove the indexation aspect, maraming mga reklamo. Ah, uh, yung po ang isang ano po, isa po na pinaka uh, sa lahat po ng, ng pinuntahan namin, even ka, yung sa last sa ano sa 5th division, ang ano po nila is a new entrance ang indexation. But one ano one strategy that we can we can have is uh, para mas tumaas yung sweldo ng uh, active is doon po sa mga ano po, mga tinatawag nating mga, mga allowances. Yung best pay maybe talaga ng gagawin natin incremental uh, based doon sa sa ano sa ano na lang po sa inflation. So yun po ang nakita natin ng strategy na we can ano, we can uh, really see na tataas pa rin sweldo ng ano ng, uh, ng sundalo but more on the allowances. Senator Bato? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Kasi pinag-aralan na yan noon ng mga mga ninuno namin sa Armed Forces of the Philippines kung bakit nagkakaroon ng indexation. That is to offset the inflationary rate, inflation rate. Kasi ang reason kung bakit tumaas ang sweldo ng active uh, na sundalo is because of the inflation. Eh, hindi na kaya magkukup up na sweldo nila ngayon yung, yung, yung cost of prices, cost of living, kaya tinaas ang sweldo. So, kung iiwan mo itong mga mga, retire, mga retirees, parang pinabayaan mo lang itong mamatay na hindi na sila rin mabubuhay dahil hindi mo sila in-index. So, pag nag-increase ang sweldo dito sa active, oh, increase din kunti itong sa retirees. Dahil nga, pariho lang naman sila kumakain, pariho lang sila nangangailangan ng gamot. So, in fact, mas marami pa nga kailangan itong mga retirees. Dahil nga, 
uh, mas matatanda na ito at maraming sakit na hinaharap. So, yan ang rason bakit nagkakaroon ng indexation. Pero yung sin proposal ni ni SND na para hindi madamay sa increase itong mga retiree, in instead na increase ang sweldo, allowances na lang ang increase doon sa mga active service, then I think it's, it's, it serves uh, the point. It, it, it solves the problem. Kapag uh, ganun ang gagawin natin, wala. Wow. Well, O, hindi na magreklamo yung mga retirees eh. Kasi wala naman silang allowances. Pensyon naman lang tinatanggap nila. So, nag-increase ang allowance ng mga active, hindi mo rin pwede humingi ng additional allowance yung mga retired. Hindi sa iniisahan natin yung mga retired, ha? Pero, uh, sa legal lang tayo. Kung hanggang saan tayo. Hanggang legal tayo. So, yun, yun lang, Mr. Chair. Salamat. Thank you. Ma'am Rosalia. Yeah. Sir, susunod po. Yung, uh, yung, yung sa pensionable age, kasi nga po ngayon, after 20 years of service, pwede na mag-retire and you get your pension. So, ang sinasabi po, ang proposal namin, yung pensionable age would be 57. Dati po, 56 yon Pero pinag na po namin ngayon doon sa AFP na magiging 57 years po yung pensionable Because of age. the new bill that uh, was po. passed. But it hasn't been signed yet by the President, no? At yet po. Pero, sir, naintindihan naman po namin na kailangan na sinasabi po merong kapital. Sort of para po uh, they can start a new, magkaroon po ng livelihood, magkaroon po ng um, kinabuka, ng kinab ano, kinabuhayan. Uh, so, nagbibigay po kami ngayon ng 18 months lump sum. But, um, on the other hand, nasabi na rin po ng AFP, right now, ang practice po nila 36 months. So, medyo may reduction po doon. So, pwede pong pag-aralan ano po yung magiging compromise namin na in terms of that lump sum na para meron pong pantawid uh, before, para pag nag-reach po silang uh, 57, magiging pensionable po sila. Pero meron din po suggestion si Secretary Gantes doon. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, your, your honors, actually, sir, kung titingnan sir natin sir, yun, no, yung uh, very contentious na when we, you know, when we discuss this to to the fifth division uh, when we went there last Saturday, talaga sir, ang pinaka-contentious issue is yung pensionable age. And also, uh, during our presentation to the president, uh, the pensionable age is uh, some sort of uh, very abrupt yung, ano, yung kanyang uh, tinatawag nating uh, kanyang adjustments. Number one, uh, yung, ano, yung ating mga sundalo na pagka-20 years, uh, nag-abail uh, uh, nag siya ng optional retirement. Ang ano niya po is a uh, uh, 36 uh, months na ano na na lump sum makukuha niya and then after 3 years makukuha niya yung uh, complete amount ng uh, pension niya na allowable sa kanya and uh, considering kung ano kung babaguhin po natin kaagad yun uh, parang mangyayari makaka-cut off natin yung livelihood ng uh, ating mga sundalo kasi normally kaya sila pumasok na ano na sundalo is uh, yun nga may mga magandang tayo ng mga, mga pension so at the same time uh, yung ano yung uh, during this time na mga 20 years 20 years, 20 years sila service, malalaki na po yung anak nila eh. So, saan po sila kukuha ng pang-aaral po ng mga anak nila? At saka, ang mangyayari pa po niyan is pagka po hindi po natin naalagaan itong mga sundalo na nag-optional retire, nakita natin yung uh, uh, sa Digamo case, nakita natin meron tayong social, ano, social problem in terms na pagka nawala po yung, ano, yung, yung pension po na yun. So, that's why ang, ano, po namin, ang recommendation po namin is... Uh, Magkaroon po ng consultation to the president, uh, we recommended to the president na magkaroon ng uh, uh, thorough discussions para makita po natin yung sentiments ng uh, mga tao. Ang anong panganam na, namin, uh, actually, uh, we have, you see, ano, si Major General Pasha, he came from ano, pre-PGAB. He knows yung, ano, yung uh, possibility na talagang nagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin yung financial system natin. Merong uh, magkakaroon po ng tinatawag natin financial problem, yung tinatawag na financial uh, restrictive space. So, ang, uh, ang recommendation namin, actually, nung pinausap namin yung mga tao, as much as possible, sabi nga namin, uh, bearing on their patriotic uh, fervor, na huwag na kayo mag-optional retirement, dire-direcho na kayo sa, ano, sa, sa, uh, sa, ano, sa compulsory retirement nyo, para at least uh, yung servisyo natin, dire-direcho, at uh, matulungan din natin ang gobyerno na ma-unburden ma 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 yung mga ano, natin sa optional retirement. In fact, uh, your honors, uh, Nakita namin yung yung ganung mga sentiment na mga sundalo 
favorably kini consider na in fact nakita na namin bumaba yung ano natin yung mga retirement natin sa ano sa uh, yung ating uh, retirees from 2021 138,552 po ang uh, ating uh, retirees noong 2022 bumaba po ito naging 136,345,000 ngayong March ng 2023 bumaba pa ulit ng 134,735 meaning Mukhang nababawasan natin yung mga nag-optional retirement. At talagang nakita natin dahil nag-doble po yung, ano, yung sweldo ng, uh, ng mga sundalo, uh, minarapat na nila na mas maganda na ma-maintain na nila yung, yung kanilang uh, status as uh, uh, soldiers na itagpos na po nila hanggang sa compulsory retirement nila. So yun po ang uh, ginagawa po namin sa Armed Forces ngayon na yung management system din ng ng, ng finances natin na we we recognize yung ano yung yung ano yung uh, current problem and in in it in, in in solving those problem we can also uh, engage with our soldiers with the discussion na ma-minimize po yung ano yung yung optional retirement and maybe maybe we can uh, also consider na yung opting optional retirement itaas natin 25 years or maybe 30, 30 years ng optional retirement so that we can we can offset uh, some of the, you know, the accrued, ano, accrued uh, uh, liabilities natin on having optional retirement. Your Honor, some, may, medyo mahirap sa kasi sa optional retirement, hindi, hindi natin na po program. Uh, kasi yung optional retirement is, is, is only the, no, yun ang medyo ano, decision ng sundala yun eh. So yun din ang medyo mahirap kasi yung variable, pagka once hindi natin na determine, predetermine, hindi natin na po forecast. For example, ngayong year na malalaman nila na, na babaguhin yung law, Maybe uh, marami pong mga optional retirement uh, ngayong year or next year. So yun ang ano, yun ang uh, yun ang nakikita namin, uh, 70% of those uh, of those uh, uh, having uh, you know, you qualified to have yung 20 years. Ang na-anticipate namin, for forecast namin, 70% of those who have 20 years already will have will will, will be option to, to to retire this year or maybe before the enactment of the new law. So yung po ang no yung po ang nakita po namin so doon sa no sa pensionable age. Pensionable age is the most controversial among the soldiers. Next day, so. You still have anything to say? Uh, Lang po. Uh, yung uh, yung pong one rank higher pag nagretire po sila, they do not uh, retire yung pong whatever is their current rank. So they are promoted one rank higher. So ang ang proposal po namin na if they retire, they retire at the current rank po nila. Mr. Chair, yung yung one rank uh, higher uh Parang kuwan lang yan eh, parang wala yan, parang premio yan sa isang nag-retire eh, na one rank higher in terms of uh, uh, pension. Parang nga, nagpasalamat ang gobyerno sa kanila, sa kanilang servisyo na ginawa at uh, nakarating sila sa panahon na yan ng retirement na hindi sila namatay. Kaya parang ganun ang uh, justification yan, Mr. Chair. So you uh, the is proposing to delete that one rank higher. Opa, so they they opa, they they will retire at the current rank. Or this, opa, but, oh, oh. this is only applicable to new entrants. New entrants only or active? Pati active. Sa amin po sa kanila po I think new entrants lang. Sa AFP. Uh asek. Uh, Mr. Chair, good morning. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, the enactment of 11709 already saw the deletion of itong one rank higher on the part of the AFP, but it was only limited to new entrants po. So, ang tangi apila lang po namin is for the active service to still benefit from itong one rank higher po. So, yung position ng AFP is only for the new entrants. And position the OR. May nakita po kami na mayroong 65% ng increase ng mga nag-optional na sir from our ranks. 65 since 2018 sir. Ibig sabihin sir, marami na ang lumalabas sa amin dahil natakot na sila sa MUP pension na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. At itong mga tao na ito sir, are mga senior uh, officers and senior pension sila yung mga nag-schooling na, may training na, may mga wisdom na sila sir sa pagpapatakbo ng organization natin. And then we are hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging uh, with our uh, senior PNCOs because natatakot po sila, sir, at uh, gusto na lang lumabas to avail of the old uh, pension law, sir. That is what ha is happening. It so if we pass PNC, this sir. law, you are expecting a uh, higher... 
a higher percentage yes uh, your honor. going to seek optional retirement yes your honor and we have here the director of prbs to uh, the, because they have the data and that also applies to the afp not only the pnp Yes. Uh, sir, uh, good morning. I am uh, Police Brigadier General Nino de Pedro Baya, the Director of the PNP Retirement Benefits Administration Service. Uh, Secretariat, if, uh, can you show the statistics? Uh, I would say, sir, that we have a very revealing uh, data as regards to uh, the PP person who availed optional retirement. Sir. Uh, from 2018 to 2022, there were a total of 18,000 who retired. Out of this... Uh, 18, optional retirement. Yes, sir. Uh, Retired, sir, both compulsory and retirement. Out Retirable of that, because of age. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, both, sir. Uh, out of these 18,000, sir, 12,000 availed the optional retirement, sir. What? Yes, sir. 12,000, sir. That's, uh, that's 65%, uh, 65%, sir. It's only, uh, maybe we can display the... Because uh, the, of this pension only? Uh, most probably, sir, there's a correlation between these okay. uh, laws, sir. Kung uh, 65% ang nag-avail ng optional retirement, yung mga new entrants, ilan? Uh, sir, uh, hindi namin na uh, ano yung uh, about mga... Yes, sir. Ano? Uh, yung yung uh, mga recruits natin, sir, we have a, a, an average of, uh, at that time, sir, we have an average of 1,000 uh, recruits uh, per year, sir. Uh, meaning uh, the optional retirees cannot, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, re uh, the recruits uh, cannot compensate the number of uh, personnel who avail optional retirement, sir. On the part of the armed forces, ilan yung ano? Dun sa PNP raw, 65% the optional retirement. Out of 18,000 of those who retired, 12,000 of them availed of the uh, optional retirement. What about the AFP? Do you have any statistics? Uh, sir, sir, we have a statistics on uh, the optional and compulsory retirement. For 2018, we have a compulsory retirement of 591. For optional retirement, uh, 2,866. For 2019, compulsory, uh, we have 534. Optional, we have 2,766. Then 2020, compulsory, uh, 553. Optional, 2,553. 2021, compulsory, 501. Medyo tumas po ng, uh, no, ng uh, 400. Uh, naging ano po tayo, 2,916. And then 2022, compulsory, 444. So optional po, naging 3,224. So, so yun po, medyo umaangat po yung ano, yung ano natin. How many percent? If you can compute, uh, we will compute, sir. You know, uh, we will uh, submit uh, the report. Uh, but for now, uh, sa 2023, na more or less uh, one quarter pala po tayo, meron na po tayo 970. Mr. Chair, yeah. it's, 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 it's very revealing that this uh, impending passage of uh, this new law that we are uh, proposing right now is uh, resulting to brain drain. As far as the MUP is concerned, talagang brain drain ito, hemorrhage ito ng utak uh, ng uh, ating uh, MUP, Mr. Uh, Chairman, dahil uh, 65%. Eh, itong mga tao na ito, they are all uh, highly trained, experience-wise, talagang uh, experience na ito. Tapos, hindi mo ito, one, hindi ito one is to one eh. Kung mayroong isang... Uh, senior officer o senior PNCO na mag-retire sa PNP, hindi ito kasa, uh, ka, hindi ito ka, uh, equivalent sa isang new entrant na isang patrolman na papasok. Dahil nga, ang investment na naka, na, na ilagay dito, training, experience, lahat-lahat ay hindi po, one, hindi po one is to one ang uh, ang uh, ang ratio. So, this is something to to think about, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sen General uh, Rodriguez. Yes, sir. I'm Police Major General uh, Robert Rodriguez, sir, the Director for Personnel and Records Management. Based on our records, sir, when the first MUP bill was uh, discussed in 2018, 
the average before 2018s are the average uh, uh, the the retirees who optionally retired in 2017 was only 1,300. It went up to 1,600 in 2018, but in 2019, from 1,608, it became uh, 3,718 optionally retired. Uh, I isa sir ako sa pinakamatagal doon sa DP na na-assign. And uh, I was the first one to notice this uh, retire, uh, optional retirees increase, sir, which I brought to the attention of the then director of uh, personnel, who is uh, police uh, Major General Kubo, sir. Your... What do you think was the reason why? Uh, because of the issue? Yes, sir, because at that time, th there was a a discussion on the diminution of uh, retirement benefits. Uh, especially yung sa leave credit, sir. Leave credits at that time was to be reduced from yung i-enjoy mo, sir, pag nag-retire ka, it's around 800, uh, 800 days ang leave credits mo na pwedeng, ang maximum mo na pwedeng enjoy 800 plus, mag-maximum uh, ka lang, sir, ng 300. So, ma malaki, sir, yung baba nung, uh, nung uh, magiging benefit mo pag-retire mo. That's why uh, isa... It was one of the uh, main issue na nag uh, So, nag, naging 3,000, sir, noong 2019. But no nag-die down, sir, yung MUP bill, uh, bumaba din, sir, nag-2,100 in 2020. And in 2021, sir, nag-2,500 din. Nag-increase siya ng konti. Then in 2022, nag-2,651. 26, sir. So, pag, pag uh, yung bill na bago ngayon, sir, just in case na magkaroon din ng ganong mga mga kwento na maging magbababa yung be benefit baka magkaroon sir din ng uh, ng additional uh, mag, mag optional na sir in fact ako kung medyo nakita kung medyo disadvantageous sir yung one baka mag mag optional na sir <laughs> that's all sir thank you hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman naapektuhan yung performance ng uh, police force sa pag pagdami ng mga uh, nag optional retirement Probably, sir, may konti, pero sabi nga, sir, pag ang nag-re-retire nag, uh, are uh, senior officers or uh, senior PNCOs, nandun yung skill, sir, eh. Sila yung nagme-mentor, eh. Sila yung nagme-mentor. Mga... Doon sa mga nag-optional retirement uh, sa PNP, no? Ilan percent yung mga, uh, yung mga general, mga... Yes, sir. Actually, ma ang malaki, sir, is uh, PNCOs. From uh, PEMSN, yung pinaka-senior na PNCOs, for 2010 to 2022, ang nag-retire po, sir, is uh, 2,900 na PEMS. Tapos yung next, ang next higher, sir, is uh, 831. Then uh, PSMS, sir, is uh, 1,155. Yung sa mga senior, sa mga officers, sir, kukunti lang. It's around, ang lieutenants, 711. Cap captain is 339 so hindi siya umaabot sir ng by hundreds lang sir yung sa officers but sa PNCO sir it's by the thousands yun lang uh, general Rodriguez isa mga general sila yung mga nag-avail ng optional retirement wala sir zero wala. sir for 2010 to 2020 gusto magpa-extend yun hindi mag-optional <laughs> Extension ng habol nun, hindi optional. <laughs> oh, the part of uh, the armed forces naman, ilan yung uh, percentage ng mga uh, generals na nag-avail ng optional retirement? Wala. So, wala, sa baba? Wala, wala, wala. Sa ano lang, sa mga, more or less mga PNCOs po. Okay. Uh, we will uh, refer everything to a technical working group first no before we uh, submit a uh, committee report because this is uh, uh, quite controversial and may i request that the mup agencies to submit to uh, before this committee your updated uh, information in the respective personnel to allow the conduct of new actuarial study by the gsis with regard to the uh, MUP pension reforms. Right? Uh, I understand it is also the GSIS who conducted the 
Oxfordshire study uh, during the uh, previous uh, Congress. Can the uh, GSIS please assist the, this committee in updating the actuarial study? Mr. Chair, before uh, GSIS, can I say something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I would like to recommend to all the agencies involved. Pag, uh, dating sa technical working uh, committee, sana ang ipailagay ninyo talaga dito na membro sa technical working committee ay yung nakafocus talaga dito Dahil ayaw natin magkakaroon ng sisihan later on. Baka mo yun, magpadala lang kayo dito na kung sino-sino, nagpapalitan pa, hindi nakafocus dito. Kung sino available, yun ipadala. And then afterwards, next meeting, iba naman ipadala. So walang continuity sa ginagawa. Pagdating ng araw, pagdating ng panahon, magsisisihan tayo dito. Na hindi maganda yung lumabas na measure na ating pinapanday dito. So please, uh, tutukan natin dito. Ayaw natin magkasisihan sa bandang huli. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Keiko, can you please assist this uh, committee? Yes, Mr. Regarding Chair. Um, the if I may share. Uh, actual study. If I may share, we already sent um, a request letter on two items. The data as of year end 22 and the historical data to determine attrition. Uh, it was sent by Treasurer De Leon last uh, April and we made the follow-up letter last uh, this May. So we're just waiting for updated data from the different agencies. And right. just one more item, Mr. Chair, if I'd be allowed to. Yes. Um, we found out that in, in the course of our studies that there are different schemes for different agencies. We hope to be clarified actually in the Technical Working Committee, the actual plan that are being implemented. Because if I may share, some of the agencies have a maximum of 85% of their retirement pay, but some have 90%. So there are different uh, there are different benefits across agencies. And in the technical working group, we hope to be advised of, of their actual practice. Thank you. You still have something to say, Madam yes. Treasurer? Uh, as, um, Mr. Chair, oh, first of all, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami. This has been a very productive uh, discussions, uh, open discussions following po yung sa small group meeting. Uh, hinihiling lang po namin sa mga MUPs na sana po maibigay na po yung uh, data so that we can start uh, in terms of the study po ng GSIS para ma-update nga po yung 2019 study. Uh, pangalawa pong data na hinihiling po namin, yung pong mga assets, kasi po kinocontemplate plate nga po namin na pagpondo po ng fund are yung part of the assets po ng uh, hawak po na in the possession ngayon po ng ating mga services. Kasi uh, that way, pwede po namin magawa ng um, strategy on how to use the funds. Either papalis po namin, then may income po na pupunta naman doon sa trust fund committee that can also finance po for the pension of the military. So, sana po yung ganong information can also be shared sa technical working group. So, I advise all uh, MUPs, uh all stakeholders concerned to please uh, submit before this committee your actual uh, position paper. Yes, uh, uh, Vice Admiral Patrimonio. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Your Honor. The Philippine Coast Guard aligns itself with the position of the Department of National Defense, the, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the Philippine National Police, and uh, we fully support that uh, this uh, law shall be applicable only to new entrants and that uh, the pension uh, rate should be reckoned uh, one rank higher on the last previous uh, rank the retiree occupied. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Galvez. Sir, we are, we are in the opinion that uh, uh, the, you know, the legislative body, uh, including the Senate and the Congress, and also the economic team and also the members of the MUP to create a uh, some sort of information education committee that will go around the different and you know, different uh, uh, units uh, nationwide because uh, you know the sentiment of the soldiers is uh, they should be consulted first before we we can know uh, we can uh, really uh, put uh, some you know, some recommendations on on the law and I, I believe that's also the position of our president that uh, we need to consult uh, our soldiers and our PNP and also our MUP so that we can get uh, the sentiment so that we can have a, some sort of common ground because uh, also, as we all know. Uh, the you know, the the, the uh, uniform services, including uh, the armed forces, the PNP, Coast Guard, uh, we are more than willing to you know, to to help on uh, really to you know, to to address uh, this this uh, this uh, impending fiscal you know, fiscal uh, uh, crisis. And uh, we are uh, with you know, with uh, our uh, treasurer that we can uh, we can we can create a, a team 
uh, that will, ano, that will uh, maybe uh, amend uh, the proposal of the economic team that will be very acceptable to all and very fair and uh, very uh, scientific in terms of uh, really putting uh, on the interventions that we can, you know, we can be acceptable to all of the MUPs. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Secretary Galvez. Any other wish to uh, to speak? Yeah, uh, Yusek Llamas of the LG. Ganun din po yung pakiusap po ng aming kagawaran sa Bureau of Treasury at uh, Department of Finance na sana po ay magkaroon ng mga town hall meetings po dito po sa, po, sa PNP, sa BFP para po maintindihan po ng mga uh, lahat ng uh, rank and file kung ano po itong pinag-uusapan. Sinabi rin po namin sa kanila na magpresenta sila ng mga datos. Pinabanggit po about yung fiscal collapse. Ano po bang uh, amount ang pinag-uusapan dito? At pinag-uusapan din po yung mga mandatory contribution. Magkano po ba in actual value ang tatamaan sa kanila? Dapat po maintindihan po ng lahat po dito po. Para po sinabi po ni Senator, wala pong sisihan po rito sa bandang huli. Kung ano po ang pagkakasunduan po natin dito, dapat po tanggap po ng lahat po nakararami ng mga kapulisan ng ating sundalo, ito pong ginagawa po natin. Salamat po. It, it has to be and must be acceptable to all parties concerned. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to rush things. There is no room for mistake here. If this committee commits a mistake, either we go for the MUPs, we go for the government, kailan we have to strike a balance, kailan acceptable to to everybody. I do not want to rush things. I will re refer this to the technical working group, but give me a timetable. No? We will adjourn by the first week of June. Alam ko hindi aabot ito ng first week of June. Siguro, when we resume after the sauna of the president, then we can uh, discuss this bill already. Okay, hindi natin kailangan madalin to. Kailangan pag-aralan. Masusing pag-aaral lang kailangan uh, gawin dito. So, Madam Treasurer and the uh, uh, the economic managers and to all MUPs uh, concerned, please coordinate and help our government. Okay? We have to strike a balance na hindi naman, hindi naman margabiyado sa ating MUPs at hindi naman margabiyado yung ating uh, gobyerno. Right? So, we'll refer this first to the technical working group. Thank you for your presence and uh, uh, kumain muna kayo. Ito ko si Generalist Tomo. May muna yung gugutom na. <laughs> okay. Hearing is hereby suspended. Thank you very much.